setting expectations. Uh, different people in this leadership workshop series will have different roles based on their experience with this leadership workshop series. For some of you, this is your fourth leadership workshop specifically on crucial conversations. So the information in the presentation, the slides and the things that we'll be saying is new to some students and it's a reminder for others. The breakout rooms and the report outs where those who have seen the training before, those people now get to model the behavior and make room for others to try that behavior uh, while we are in those breakouts. And then the third part of, of uh, how this training really affects all of you is that uh, we have interactions between team members that follow after training. Every robotics after dark meeting and every regular season meeting uh, is now an opportunity for people to feel safe to practice and learn the skills further and then also to apply the skills. Uh, so tonight it will be myself, Mr. John and Mr. Schmidt, uh, who will be doing some of the, the leading here. And I'd like to welcome everybody to Crucial Conversations training. Uh, I used to call this my first book report, uh, but this is the fourth time that I'm doing it. So it's not my first book report in the last 30 years anymore. Uh, what we are working towards is talking about the ideas and tools in this book that's called Crucial Conversations. So why are we doing this? Well, you are going to spend time in this life interacting with other people. There will be times when you communicate smoothly with them, and there will be other times when relationships start to go off the rails. In the Husky Robotics team setting, you can't afford to have broken relationships. That is why we want you to have the tools to reopen and maintain honest communication when something has gone wrong. Then you will be able to address the issue and make a bridge port with the other person, a bridge placed on real trust. If you're going to do well in a crucial conversation, it might be good to know what one looks like. There are many examples, but here are three. Focus with me for just a minute on the third one. You might recognize this from group projects or other teams that you've been on. Have you ever had a person in your life who is selfish and loud about it? They don't seem to be good at anything, but they want to be in charge of everything. Their behavior is hurting the team's goals, other people. Possibly it's also hurting you. Everyone is growing more frustrated with this person and somebody is going to have to talk to them. Okay, do you have that in your head now, I hope? Well, you may be the one who has to address them about something very personal or potentially embarrassing. You don't know what to say and you're worried about how they will react when you tell them that they are selfish and unskilled or you don't generally think about how they will react and you might not even know how your conversations are really going. How do you think they might react with what you would say? They could get angry. They could blame you, complain about you behind your back. When we allow ourselves to think only about how they may react, there's a good chance that we will not talk to them about the issue. So as a leader, there will be times when you have to give someone information that you feel could make the situation worse, but it doesn't have to be that way. So Mr. Schmidt and I are going to get into character now as we act out our first example. And uh, to show you that we are in character, uh, we will both don our safety glasses. I think oh, you're on shoot. mute. I just, oh no. Nope, you're Am good, I? you're good. Sorry. Okay, phew. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot, I just popped this wire off. Hey, Mr. John, go get me a screwdriver, will ya? Go get it yourself, Mr. Schmidt. 
I have to fix this now. The, the software team is waiting for it. Why do you think that you're more important than me? I'm not more important than you, but this task is on the critical path. And right now you are stopping the team from meeting its goals. I was just sitting here doing my job. You came in, broke the robot, and now it's my fault. Yeah, you pea brain dodo bird. It is your fault because you aren't being a team player. Now get the screwdriver or I'll tell the coach. So think to yourself, if you've experienced a conversation with similar energy or similar pain, either on or off the team, I'm guessing that at least some of those conversations were with people that you needed to get along with in order to reach your goal. When it matters most, why are we often at our worst? When we see that something important to us is no longer in reach because of some action or issue, we can develop emotions over that perceived loss. Emotions like fear or anger can quickly come into play. Next, you might notice that your motives start to change. You had been focused on fixing the robot, but now you've shifted your focus to winning the argument that is developing. Emotions like fear or anger might be useful if you're running a race and you want that emotion to help push you to the finish line, but we're not talking about a race where there's only one winner. Instead, we're talking about being in dialogue with another person. We are working towards an outcome that is beneficial to both of us. To improve our chances of making it good for both of us, we need to make sure that we understand the information that both people have. So what tools can get us from a terrible conversation to a good dialogue? These are those tools that we're going to learn about together. They will help you to both address the problem and respect the person. Begin with the end in mind, learn to look and make it safe. With any difficult interpersonal situation, it's imperative that you begin with the end in mind. To get both your head and your heart in the right place, ask yourself, what do I really want? What do I really want for them, for myself, for our relationship? What do I not want as a result? Maybe I want them to enjoy their time on the team and I want us to build trust and I don't want to embarrass them. That seems like a lot of things to happen all at once. The trick here is to ask the and question. How do I get this and the other? How do I talk about this awkward thing and not argue with them? How do I tell them my concerns and not insult them? So Mr. Schmidt's about to put us into breakout rooms. Please be sure to introduce yourself to anyone you don't already know, and then move on to the questions in the shared doc. When we come back, we will share back an answer to each of these questions in the chat. And note on your, on your sheet, there's gonna be five minutes in the breakout room. The counter is gonna start at four minutes. When the counter counts down to four minutes, that's just your note that, oh, we only have one minute left. Make sure you uh, grab somebody, select somebody in your team to report out, and then we'll go back. Take away, Mr. Schmidt. All right, I'm almost got everybody in a good place. Let me just double check a couple things. Hopefully everybody's been able to pull up those breakout room 
uh, the, the read-alongs, the handouts. I will paste them again in the chat just to be safe because we had All some right. people join us. So they're, they're there and there. Um, I think I have the rooms correct. So I'm going to open these. And up. I will, hold on, I will correct oh. what I said. When we come back, we're going to be responding to these in the chat. We're not going to have somebody selected to report out. My apologies. So everybody will be able to report out in the chat. Thank you. Got it. All right, here we go. Looks like it. All right. So uh, before we put responses in the chat, if you want to be specific about who you focused on, you could start your answer with an S for Mr. Schmidt or a J for Mr. John. Um, go ahead, uh, start typing things into the chat. We'll take a look as it comes through. Uh, we'll see what kinds of themes we have from you guys. I feel like we're going to get full sentences because it's taking a while for the chat to start filling. All right, I'm going to read a few of these out as, as they come in. Uh, Mr. Schmidt wants Mr. John to understand the criticality of the situation and what he can do to be helpful. You want them to be able to contribute to the team and help them in achieving their goals as well. Mr. Schmidt wants Mr. John to understand why he, why Mr. John being a team player is important but also doesn't want to create more problems between them than necessary as they will have to work together during the remainder of the year. Absolutely. So starting to see some themes of um, helping, helping each other, uh, wanting the other person to understand how they are part of this larger team. Uh, Mr. John wants to feel respected by Mr. Schmidt, not feel like a lesser member of the team. So that's coming in with some, some of the respect side. Ooh, okay, now they're starting to come in too fast. Including Mr. John, including other members, while also getting the work done, having an involved and friendly and supportive relationship. Um, help people to understand how what's currently happening is not helping the team as a whole. Treat as equals get the screwdriver, get it done and fixed and sent to, to software without any conflicts and not harming the relationship. Um, so, so we're seeing some wonderful thoughts from everybody here. What I'd like you to think of now is how much better would the conversation have gone if one or both of the players had asked themselves these questions before the words started spilling out of their mouths? Do you think it would have been a little bit better? I'd like to think with some of the stuff that you you have all put up here um, that it would have been quite a bit better. So what you really want and don't want out of the conversation is the first part of begin with the end in mind. So now let's take a look at the second part of begin with the end in mind. If you don't talk it out, you will act it out. And way too often, we find ourselves going down this whole path to action. We start with seeing or hearing some observable facts. This is when we should stop progressing down the path, but we frequently do not. 
Next, we tell ourselves a clever story about victims and villains and helplessness. We will cover this more in a moment. We should stop our progress on the path here, but we often do not. Based on that story we just told ourselves, we develop emotions towards the other person, usually with negative implications. This would also be a great place to stop going down the path. But if we don't stop, then we act out those emotions using some mix of verbal silence, like changing the subject, and verbal violence, like yelling and name calling. We'll talk more about those in the next tool. The end goal is to stop yourself from traveling the path to action. And instead of acting out, you want to get curious, talk it out, and learn. So let's take a moment to understand these clever stories. So these stories are called clever because they allow us to feel good about behaving badly while getting terrible results. Let's think about that again. We tell ourselves this story and the story is clever because it allows us to feel good about behaving badly while getting terrible results. That's not when you should be feeling good and that's not how you should be behaving. So first, let's talk about the victim story. I'm not talking about the victim of a crime. What I am talking about is telling yourself a story where you were beyond perfect and still this terrible thing happened to you. Can you believe it? Right, in the example, Mr. John had no personal accountability to, for the problem. So he did not see where he needed to apologize nor where he needed to make changes in his own behavior to meet the common goal. Next, we'll look at the villain story. The other person is the villain in your mind. So that means you are fighting evil. And when you're fighting evil, your mind justifies using any means to win. Like the argument earlier where Mr. Schmidt's motives shifted to winning. If this was you, you might stereotype the other person or label them with a nickname like pea brain dodo bird. You would likely do things that you would not be proud of in the future if you ever get past this villain story. Those around you who saw this would likely note that you were the one who destroyed the relationship. Now, a helpless story often comes from a villain story. The other person is a villain and will not change no matter what you do. You may move to verbal silence and not address the issue at all by avoiding, or you may move to verbal violence and take out your anger on the other person. But no matter what you do, it won't do any good. But hey, yelling and name calling might make you feel better, right? So don't think of helpless as being incapable of taking any action. Instead, think of the helpless story as giving you the license to not care anymore. So in the handout, you have the script from Mr. Schmidt and Mr. John's conversation that turned crucial. Pretend that you as a group in this breakout room that's about to happen are one of the two characters. Even numbered teams, uh, breakout rooms get Mr. Schmidt and odd numbered rooms get Mr. John. Start with their observed facts from this interaction. Then see if you can figure out what story they told themselves and work your way to understand their feelings, ending with their final verbal actions. Do you think all of this happened because of the screwdriver incident? So on this one, yes, we would like to hear from a few groups when we come back. So please pick someone to report out. And remember, even numbered teams get Mr. Schmidt and odd numbered breakout rooms get Mr. John. Again, Four minutes will be counting down, and then you still have a fifth minute after the countdown completes. When you are ready, Mr. Schmidt. All right, here we go. Okay. We are all back. Very good. So uh, we'd like to hear from a few groups. So uh, I'd like to start out with somebody talking about Mr. Schmidt's perspective. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand. 
in Zoom. And I'm really hoping that the raised hands show up at the top of my list. Okay, don't everybody raise their hand at once because that would just be crazy. All right, load them. Yeah, so our group pretty much said that um, the Mr. Schmidt character was telling themselves a um villain story um that the like person was trying to like that mr john's character was trying to overwork them like be arrogant um and overall just not uh not help them with their objectives. Hmm. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Lodum. Who else? Anything additional to talk about uh, from the Mr. Schmidt perspective? Okay, not everybody all at once. All right, anybody for the Mr. John perspective? All right, Aaron, go ahead. Um, we said that the scene here was uh, Mr. John heard a almost slightly dismissive tone when he was asked to help with something he didn't really want to help with. And then when he sort of indirectly brought that up it was never addressed again then with the tell the story painted that whole thing as a victim of a dismissive team leader with him being at in harm's way in that instance which made him feel hurt and then acted in violence very good all right thank you does anybody else have anything to share with with either mr schmidt or mr john All right. Well, this is the end of the begin with the end in mind tool. Let's take a look now at the second tool, which is learn to look. So you want to recognize if a conversation turns crucial. When the emotions are of one or both of you start ramping up, and remember, verbal silence and verbal violence are the action that we take after we have already told a clever story and had an emotional response to it. When, when we see that actions are getting observed, then we know that we are in a crucial conversation. On the screen, you can see the major categories of verbal silence and verbal violence, and some keywords to help explain them, such as avoiding and withdrawing or controlling and attacking. And at the beginning of the presentation, we asked you to be ready with your answers to the style under stress questions in the pre-work. So take a look at only the questions that you answered as true which column do they mainly fall under? For example, a person might have answered true to questions one, four, five, nine, and 10. And so you could say that they favor silence as a style. But what if they were more evenly split? Well, you, they're more balanced in their style usage. Please note that this is only a style that you use. It is not an inalterable character trait or genetic predisposition. You can learn to change your behavior away from using these styles and instead always begin with the end in mind, learn to look and make it safe. When you're in a conversation, 
you want to recognize when it turns crucial. When the emotions of one or both of you are start, start ramping up. So use the link that is in your handout to help us build a word cloud. Please type in your current style under stress, either silence or violence or balanced. And then one additional word that describes one aspect of your style under stress, such as masking or controlling. All right, so Mr. Schmidt, are you ready for me to stop sharing? Yes, I will display the results here. All right. Should we separate them with just a space? That would be perfect. You can click the link in the handout slides that were sent earlier to get to this poll. So look at all these different ways that people on your team respond when they are under stress. Now, I will note that for the fourth year in a row, silence seems to be one of the larger ways that your team uh, responds. This is great for your understanding and for your teammates. When more of you are aware of what the style under stress looks like, then more of you can watch for it appearing in a conversation. Now, I don't want you to just say, hey, you're using avoidance and sarcasm. You must be using your verbal silence under stress. I mean, this works great if the person you caught using the style is you. But when you're working with another person, you have to address them with compassion, which is empathy and action. All right, why can I not remember how to start sharing? Here we go. Okay. So let's say that you have recognized that you or the other person there we go, are moving to verbal silence or verbal violence. Now is the time to step out of the conversation and work on making it safe again. You want it to be safe for both of you to be able to share your ob observations so that you can understand what the true issues are and get to work addressing those issues. The first three skills we will learn for make it safe are apologize when appropriate, so if you have that sudden realization that for sure I really said that, you're in first and you need to apologize. Contrasting to improve understanding, we'll get to some examples of that in a minute, and retracing your path. If you move to verbal silence or verbal violence, how did you get there? You wanna work your way back to the observed facts so that you can restart. And then you will have to repeat because we are only human and we will make mistakes. Your conversation will not go perfectly, but nine out of 10 times you can build the relationship if you do the compassionate work to make it safe. You will likely have to apologize, contrast and retrace more than once. So 
so when I'm talking about apologizing, I mean, you have to apologize from the heart, recognizing your role in the problem. I do not mean, I'm sorry if you were hurt by what I said, or I'm sorry you feel that way, or I'm sorry that you misunderstood. The column on the left is often, often called a fake apology. You have to be sincere in your apologies or the other person will see right through you and the trust that you're working to build will be destroyed. The next skill is contrasting. When, as I've been going through everything tonight, I've been using contrasting throughout the whole presentation. Sometimes when the stakes are high, you need to be sure to say not only what it is that you mean, but also what it is that you do not mean. The verbal contrasting helps to clarify your intent. You'll need to say something out loud, like I do not mean this, but I do mean that to help the other person understand your true intent. As a quick example, when I said I wanted you to get this done as soon as possible, I did not mean that I expect you to do robotics work outside of the meetings. I do mean that while we are in the meetings, I expect you to prioritize this task above the others. Hopefully that makes sense. The third skill in the Make It Safe toolbox is retrace your path. This is similar to the breakout room we did earlier where you traced how Mr. Schmidt or I started on the path and how we got to the end. But this is different because this is a tool to help you when you're in the middle of a conversation that is turning crucial. We already talked about learning to look to see if the conversation is going wrong. If you can see that it's going wrong and they're the one reacting to you, then you must be acting out. So if I'm acting out, what are these feelings that I'm feeling? Why do I have these feelings? What story did I tell myself? And finally, why did I tell this story? What were the facts that I observed? I've now moved backwards from act to feel, to tell a story, to see and hear. And I've finally gotten back to the facts that I observed. Now I can recognize that there are other facts out there and I can get curious about them. When I'm curious, I no longer feel like I know what has happened. I no longer feel like the story I told myself is true. Instead, I now feel like there is something out there to be discovered. And when I discover it, I will understand the situation much better than I do right now. So here are the first three skills again in Make It Safe. Apologize when appropriate, use contrasting to improve understanding, and retracing your path. And then remember to repeat because we will all make mistakes and we will then need to fix them. Now we're gonna go back to the scene of the original Crucial Conversation where we find our FRC players trying to fix relationship concerns. To set the stage, Mr. John is doing some work and Mr. Schmidt, who has been doing some thinking, comes over. So we'll get into gear. Go ahead, Mr. Schmidt. Hey, Mr. John, I would like to apologize for what happened earlier and try to get a better understanding. Do you have some time now? Sure, whatever. I realized that I told myself a clever story earlier, and I let myself get emotional. I apologize for calling you names and threatening to report you to the coaches. I was wrong, and I should not have lost my temper. I am sorry. Yeah. You aren't being a team player. 
After that incident, I realized that there may be something more broken in our relationship than just that one Wago issue. I would like to see if we could work on making things better between us. Are you open to that? Nah, look, we're good. You say we are good, but your actions seem to be telling me that we are not. I would really like to understand what is going on and help to make it better. Ever since you became the lead, you've been really bossy. You don't care about any of my ideas. You believe that I think that I am better than you? Is that correct? Yeah. Like when you shot down my idea on how to fix the pneumatics in the middle of the team meeting yesterday. I thought we used to be friends. Mr. John, now that you mention it, I realized that I did shoot you down yesterday. I apologize for doing that. It was not appropriate. I do want to be a good team lead, and I do not want to hurt our friendship. I'm focused so much on how to be a good team lead that I forget how I impact the people around me. Can you please help me find a way to be a good team lead and rebuild our friendship? All right. So I'm out of character again. In your small groups, please analyze this conversation. And in the handout, you have the whole script. So how did Mr. Schmidt work to repair the relationship? What tools did he use? Apologizing, contrasting, retracing his path. We'll have a few groups report out. So please choose a speaker for your group. Um, and again, four minutes plus one. So wait for the countdown and then go that extra minute. Take it away, Mr. Schmidt. All right, here we go. All right. All right, it looks like we are back. Okay. So uh, again, uh, please raise your hand if you would like to report out. Franklin? Okay, so our group said that Mr. Schmidt multiple times apologized to Mr. John, and that also when he realized that Mr. John had like legitimate concerns to share, then Mr. Schmidt backed off and let Mr. John talk and finish his concerns. All right, thank you. Jay? Yeah, we said the same thing, how Mr. Schmidt like apologized throughout the whole thing. Um, even toward the end, he kept apologizing. And then he was like, he was vulnerable and he identified his shortcomings. And then throughout the whole thing, he was like sincere and honest. And then he had a detailed account of the whole thing, which allowed like the real details to come out and let Mr. John remember what happened. Okay, very good. Thank you. And Jake? Um, we noted that... Uh for the script, like Mr. Schmidt um, kind of had a bit of like a contrast and then also like retracing like uh, the path when talking about like he said um, uh, how like he was trying to be a good lead, like he didn't mean to like be a, a bad friend. Um, and uh, he said, I do want to be a good team lead and I do not want to hurt our friendship. And so that kind of is that contrast where it's like acknowledging what one person might see it as versus uh, then, but then explaining like what really you're trying to say. Um, and then also retracing the path with then going back and acknowledging like what happened during like previously prior to the whole initial incident with the um, during the team meeting that kind of retraces back to that. And then he apologizes for that. Okay, thank you. All right, so two more, Samika and then Andrea. Um, we also kind of talked about how even though Mr. John was like, oh no, it's fine. Mr. Schmidt chose to like ask again because he could tell that something was wrong. And that kind of just shows how Mr. Schmidt really cares about what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Andrea? Samika so basically just commented on this, but like Mr. Schmidt contrasts like what Mr. John is saying versus how he's kind of acting. 
and express it again, like Mr. Schwit really does care about their relationship and it's safe for Mr. John to share his concerns. Very good, very good. Thank you all. Okay, well, let's move on to um, making it safe. So there will be times when you are doing the compassionate hard work to make it safe and the other person is still stuck in silence or violence. And I'm going to I'm going to pull up what uh, Samika and Andrea were just talking about. You're going to see that here as mirroring. So take a moment to look at the script in the handout and recognize when these other keywords came into play. As part of making it safe, it also helps to resist interrupting and value everyone's truth. So the examples that were in the handout, uh, it, sorry, it, examples for, for you to think about as, as you go forward into having these kinds of, of conversations are things like, I'd really like to hear your opinion on this. You're asking genuinely for their thinking. Please let me know if you see it differently. And for mirroring, you seem angry at me or you seem upset. You look nervous about doing this. And it just helps them to recognize that, that uh, it would be safe to talk about that feeling right now. Paraphrasing, I'd like to check my understanding. I think that what you're saying is, and then state in your own words what, what it was that you think their concern or their perspective was, and then ask back at the top, did I understand that correctly? And suggesting, it works well when they aren't sharing anything, when they are in full silence, but you have to do it very tentatively. Are you thinking that I pulled you off that project because I thought you couldn't do it, right? You're just kind of suggesting what possibly might be the problem. It also means you've taken a little bit of time to think about what the problem might be. So if you need to start a crucial conversation, you can use this as kind of a rough guide. On the left, you'll see uh, person number one, which would be hopefully you. And on the right, you would see person number two, which is hopefully the other person. Um, and so you start out with, I'd like to talk about this issue. I do not think that this is your fault. And I know that I may not understand all of the issues. Can we talk about this? So you've provided facts, you've done some contrasting, and you were tentative, right? Can we talk about this? And so the other person, maybe being silent, maybe telling a helpless story, why should we talk about this? You never listen to me. So they're being dismissive and they're gonna walk away. And so then you can come back with, well, what I want is for, and then state what it is that you want uh, to, to come out of here uh, as hopefully it's a mutual purpose that both of you should be looking for. And I want that while not causing anyone to feel hurt, uh, to be excluded, to lose what it is that they're working on, right? And then you follow up with that tentative question at the end. Is this what you want? And so they might say, yeah, but I also want this other thing because, and so now you've been curious and you've kind of pulled out of them what their concerns are. And so now you're starting to get really into dialogue, which is awesome. That's where you want to be able to get to. So you've now heard some of the most powerful tools in the Crucial Conversations book. You know enough to start planning and holding crucial conversations of your own. Beginning with the end in mind, learning to look and making it safe. So how would you use these tools? We're gonna to go into a 10 minute breakout. 
nine plus one. Putting everything together, and you've got the stuff in the handouts, we want you to think about how you could address these issues. Um, so listen carefully, in your breakout room, quickly select one of the three prompts, one, two, or three, and then as a group, play the part of you. For instance, imagine that you have just said, this is the top priority. Um, I'm sorry, that's last year's. Imagine you've just said, why isn't my part ready yet? I marked it as a high priority. And next, imagine that the other person responds with, well, so-and-so told me to fabricate this one first. Then discuss how you would respond to that person's statement, the them statement. So again, nine minutes plus one minute and uh, just pick one, two, or three and have that converse and think about how you would respond to that conversation. Feel free to make up the backstory and you can share out part of the backstory. Don't make it too long, but you can share out part of the backstory as to why this stuff is going on. That's part of why you have 10 minutes here. But the other part is because there's a lot of stuff I just threw at you and I want you to spend some time looking at the handouts, digging through some of those different tools and figuring out how you could apply those tools to these initial conversations. All right, Mr. Schmidt, nine minutes plus one. Okay, here we go. Thank you. All right, I think we are all back. Okay, so love to have a few people uh, raise their hands, hopefully people who haven't already responded uh, or reported out, I should say, um, and tell us uh, which, which of the stories you chose and what you thought about doing with them. Stefan. So we chose the third story with the Arbor Press and some one, some of the main things we thought about was how um, it's important. Uh, it'll be important to talk to the person about not keeping it between the two of them and uh, having it between uh, like tell a coach or tell the rest of the team for just like the safety aspect of it. And also um, like seeing how they reacted to that and, and seeing how they feel to kind of comfort them with that situation because that, that's a situation where you'd probably be in a lot of distress and kind of making sure they're, they don't feel singled out or scared that they're gonna be blamed or feel really bad about it. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, another team, please. Ayush. Yeah, so uh, we kind of, we discussed the first question about why isn't my part ready yet? I marked it as high priority. So-and-so told me to fabricate this first. Um, thinking about like the begin with, uh, beginning with the end in mind, we are talking about how kind of like the end goal, thinking about what the end goal is to get the part ready. So i um, trying to kind of, I'm um, saying that it's okay that, you know, I wasn't done, but like, let's try to resolve the issue and like um, try to get the part finished as quick as possible without trying to argue too much between each other about why it's not done. Um, and then like, guys and then talking about make it safe just continually saying like it's okay it's not done but like kind of stressing the importance of making sure this gets resolved and doesn't happen next time okay okay thank you who else love to hear a couple more at least and it's okay if, obviously if i'm asking for a couple more we're gonna get some duplicates christine Okay, so um, we said for the third question, the Arbor Press, we said we wanted to, uh, one of the main things is that we wanted to make sure that they felt okay enough to share with a coach or someone that the thing happened so we can kind of be vulnerable and kind of like share a story of how we also once did like had similar accents like that and it's not that big of a deal and that the most important thing is doing the right thing, which would be telling someone. Very good, thank you. And then, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. 
And then you can also kind of reflect if you see that, you know, they're obviously nervous. So you can be like, you know, I see you're nervous, but, you know, kind of comfort them. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Can we get one more? Okay, maybe we can't. All right, so let's move on. So these are very hard tools to remember to use while you are in the middle of a conversation that's turning crucial. You may be able to retrace your path right there in the middle of the conversation. And other times you don't realize what has happened until later and you have to go back and fix it like in our example. Sometimes you have to wait until later because you need space and time for the emotions to subside. So recognize it is hard to do this well. I have problems doing this well and I'm the one giving the training. But if each of us keep trying, if we do that repeat part, we will get better. You will be able to improve your relationships after a conversation turned crucial. You will have better communication throughout your team. Now, something big that your team has going for it is that all of you have now gone through this training and some of you four times. This gives you a common language and common cues so that hopefully if you hear someone using these skills with you, you will be able to recognize that the conversation has turned crucial and you need to pause and help with rebuilding the relationship. So now that you understand what a crucial conversation is, take a moment for introspection. Do you have any places in your life that aren't going well? Do you have relationships that feel stuck because you can't get past something that was said or done to you or by you in the past? Or maybe it's because you've just played out a bunch of scenarios in your head and they all end up with you and the other person either in verbal silence or verbal violence. Think through why you feel that way. Retrace your path to action. Are you attributing evil intent to the other person? What story are you telling yourself? Victim, villain, helpless? Just remember that our truth really enables a change of heart. So there are more skills for crucial conversations that I would love to teach you guys. There are even skills for how to respectfully hold other people accountable, which we will be discussing in, I believe, two weeks. And if you ever get the chance, you should pick up these books or take the professional training. They really are both quite awesome. And note that we have put resources on Trello with slides and handout kind of information on that card too. So for people who like acronyms, here's all the acronyms that I threw in there um, just because I'm silly and I hope you guys can be silly too. So we would like as many of you as have interest to come to the next leadership workshops. October 30th is servant and situational leadership. And then we step into the crucial accountability and we add in crucial influence. Then on to project management and risk analysis. Then we get to our vision and goals session and then after we've gone through all of that, the captains lead a development of mission objectives and goals for the team. All right, now finally, 
the keep fix try tonight. I mean, we ended five minutes early, so you guys have plenty of extra time tonight, right? Tonight or tomorrow, capture any feedback on this leadership workshop session in terms of what we should keep doing, consider fixing, or consider trying next time. Mr. Schmidt, you had something you wanted to say about this? Yes, so you may need to refresh the handout slides um, to make sure that it says 2023 instead of 2022. We want to make sure everyone's in the right document. So please refresh as, as needed. And we do take a look at the keep, fix, try information that you provide. Um, the things that we can do, we do. The things that we can't do or don't make uh what won't fit the purpose uh we we don't do but we need to hear what your thoughts are so we can figure out what kinds of things we can do uh so please uh brutal honesty is good i like that um but be compassionate with your brutal honesty um and give us all that you can we are right up against our 9 30 uh i will I plan to be at robotics this Wednesday night. If anybody has questions about crucial conversations, please feel free. Uh, I know that myself, uh, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Gupta have all had uh, training in crucial conversations and would love to talk to you further about those. Um, and also you have your friends, right? Who you can ask questions of as well. So uh, please go forth and do good things where you are able to both improve a relationship and address uh, a specific difficult concern. Thank you all very much for joining us tonight and look forward to seeing you at Robotics After Dark and Robotics starting in January. Let's thank uh, Mr. John for uh, leading us through this, this great leadership workshop this evening. So thank you, Mr. John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. 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 You're, all, you're all very welcome. Thank you.